Thank you for watching Light for Darkness Ministries. We are looking at Who is Michael the Archangel, Part 2, the creation of Lucifer, and how he devolved from God's most perfect and beautiful angel to the villain. Let's begin by studying Ezekiel 28, 11 through 19. But first, let's read over the passage. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardis, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes were prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore I cast you out as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they may gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you, and I turned you into ashes upon the earth. All who knew you among you are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. Now let's go over some of the key words in these passages. We're going to look at the English word, the Hebrew word, and the definition according to the Strong's Concordance. Seal, or mark, to put to an end. Lucifer symbolized completion. Perfection, Khalil, complete, the whole. Lucifer was the whole of perfection. Covering, or sakak, to entwine as a screen, to fence in, cover over, to protect, defend, hedge in, join together or set up. It is clear that Lucifer's charge had to do with more than a blanket covering. Anoint, or mimash, which means a sense of expansion. It could mean growth. Lucifer was given many talents, titles, and even authority. Stones, or ebon, to build, specifically a mason, a builder or worker in stone. Trading, rakula, which means merchandise. Mountain of God. The mountain of God is mentioned several times in the Bible. Here are some cross-reference verses. Revelation 14.1, the Lamb on Mount Zion, and Psalm 25.1, Mount Zion abides forever. What is the only place that is not going to be destroyed and renewed after the second coming of Jesus? Let's read Revelation 21.1-3. Now I saw a new heaven and earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. Now let's look at the last two key words, sanctuaries, literally a palace, new, acquaintance, friend, or partner. And our key sentence, you have become a horror in the New King James Version, but in the New American Standard Bible, it's you have become terrified. Now that we've gone over the key words, let's go over a key passage. Notice how God chose to cover or clothe Lucifer. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardis, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. Now let's look at the mountain of Zion as described in Revelation 21, 19 through 21. The foundation of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, 
the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, and each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. So many of the same precious stones that clothe Lucifer are also in the foundations and building of the holy city of Zion. Did God put a blueprint of the magnificent city on this cherub? Remember, God made Lucifer a musical being. His timbrels and pipes were made for him on the day of his creation. Lucifer is a musical being created by God. Let's bring some of this information together so that we can understand to the best of our ability what happened outside of the human realm and what is happening today in the cosmic battle between spirits. Why did Lucifer betray God in the heavenly realm? What did Adam and Eve get us into when they chose to obey the serpent? And most importantly, why does God reveal information to us? Remember, there is a real and tangible reason for salvation. Salvation is the ability to be part of God's kingdom and dwell in the holy city and tabernacle with the Lord forever. Lucifer was an angel that was created special for a special purpose. He was made musical. Your timbrels and pipes were prepared for you on the day you were created. Now compare with the New American Standard Bible. The workmanship of your settings and sockets was in you. Lucifer's instruments were not made as items for him, but as part of him. He was indeed a musical creature, but Lucifer was made for more and was gifted with more. He was created for a purpose in addition to his musical gift and purposes. Lucifer was the mark of perfection. He was the perfect specimen of wisdom, beauty, and skill. Lucifer was anointed and established on the mountain of God by God, and Lucifer walked back and forth through the midst of the Masons. Lucifer was an overseer. These angels were building something, but what? The word fiery means a literal fire, but the word stones in this context is from the Hebrew, Eben, which is Mason. How do you build with precious stones such as gold? The answer is with fire. A man who oversees a construction site will walk back and forth, checking everything, directing the work, and delegating the work. Any good overseer will handle the most important job personally. What would that job be in the city of God? Let's read Isaiah 14, 13 to find out. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God, and I will sit on the Mount of Assembly. When we build or make something, it often becomes ours. Have you ever wondered what throne Lucifer was talking about in the first place? This verse makes sense of someone who is building and or designing it. It makes perfect sense in Revelation 7 through 11, where we read about Lucifer making one last attempt to get the city of God and siege the throne. Yes, he wants power, but he already feels entitled to it. He already believes that the power should be his in the first place. But the throne was not intended for Lucifer. He allowed ideas and pride to enter his mind through the merchandise of his project, the Holy City. Because he had a leadership role, and because he had some authority, Lucifer got it into his head that he should have all the authority, that it was him that deserved the throne, rather than Michael. It was rightfully his. And we see the throne come up in Revelation 20.11, I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it. We can now understand why Lucifer hates Christians because he really hates the one that they serve. Lucifer knew him intimately as Michael. And while Lucifer was beautiful and talented, a craftsman, an overseer, and a musician, Michael was and is God's son, and he is the prince. Not only was and is Michael the prince of heaven, he was established as the commander of the army, commander of all the angels, including Lucifer. 
From Lucifer's viewpoint, to add insult to injury, God gave Michael all authority. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 28, 18. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. It was Michael and God that the music was played for in their honor, or maybe only Michael's honor. The throne that Lucifer came to love and envy, the throne that Lucifer felt entitled to and desired for himself, was for Michael. Michael the Prince. And when you're a prince, there's going to be a coronation. Yes, Michael was the prince, but Lucifer wanted to be the prince and to have the authority. This is the conclusion of Who is Michael the Archangel, Part 2. In Part 3, we will look at a possible unfolding of events between these two divine beings, one a fallen angel, one the prince who comes back as king to dwell with the people.